In this video, I'm going to show you how to collect process data from an MQTT Edge device on the plant floor and forward it to Canary Historian for analysis using the HiveMQ Cloud MQTT Broker. And for demonstration, I'm going to use the Groove Rio to collect temperature, pressure, and level of our cooling tower simulated by my demonstration here. So, Canary is a process data historian solution that allows you to collect, store, and use visual tools to contextualize that data in order to maximize your operation with better decisions. Canary offers a wide range of mechanisms by which you could collect data from industrial devices and PLCs such as our Groove Rio, one of which is using the MQTT protocol. This is where the Hive MQ Cloud comes in. It acts as a reliable, cloud-based MQTT message broker that securely receives MQTT messages that are being published from the plant floor and forwards them to the Canary Cloud platform, fast and efficiently. And to receive MQTT messages from the broker, Canary Cloud uses what is called an MQTT collector. Now, because Hive MQ Cloud and the Canary Cloud platforms both support MQTT Spark Plug B specification, it means if your plant flow device or PLC also supports MQTT Spark Plug B, then transferring your plant process data to the Canary historian can be plug and play. And this is what I intend to demonstrate in this video. So I'm going to begin by showing you how to set up your MQTT broker on Hive MQ Cloud. And to do that, I'll open up my browser and go to this URL. And then here, I'll scroll down and sign up for the free version that allows me to connect up to 100 clients, which is more than enough for this demo. Now, when I click sign up now, I'm redirected to the Hive MQ Cloud portal. And here, I'll enter my login information because I already have an account. If you do not have an account, you can go ahead and sign up by entering your email, password, and then confirming your account via email. When signing up for the first time, you'll need to follow the simple steps of setting up your cluster. And part of that includes setting up credentials that your device and Canary MQTT connector will use to connect to the MQTT broker. However, you will be able to change your credentials as and when required. Once I'm logged into my console, I can see the clusters that I currently have under my account, their statuses, and for each cluster, I can see my broker URL address or host name and the port number. And if I need to find out more details about my cluster and edit access credentials, then I click into manage cluster. Okay, so just by signing up, I had an MQTT broker automatically provisioned for me. Now all I need to do is to copy these details and use them to configure my Groove Rio so that I can start publishing the level, temperature, and pressure values of our cooling tower as MQTT Spark Plug B messages to this broker. So I'll go ahead and copy the host name and then I'll note the port number. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to configure this Groove Rio I.O. device to publish temperature, liquid level, and pressure values as MQTT Spark Plug B messages to our Hive MQ Cloud MQTT broker. So let's quickly go through the setup that I have here. So for temperature measurement, I've got an ICTD temperature probe that I've connected to channel one of my Groove Rio. And then for pressure measurement, I've got this four to 20 milliamp pressure transducer that I've connected to channel two of the Rio. And lastly, for measuring level, I've got my liquid container sitting on top of this load cell and I've connected the load cell's output millivolt signal to the Groove Rio as an analog input on channel 3 and scaled it to give us 0% when the jar is empty and 100% when it is full. Okay, let's head over to my browser and configure this device to publish these field measurements to the Hive MQ Cloud Broker. So. I'm currently logged into my Groove Rio management interface. 
So here I'll select IO channels. Now if I select channel 1 here, you can see that our temperature is currently reading 18.2 degrees Celsius. And if I warm it up, you can see it start to rise. And then if I go to channel 2, you can see the current pressure reading, which I can change by blowing into the transducer. Finally, on channel 3, we've got our liquid level reading. And if I pour some more liquid, you can see it go up. Now, what will be interesting to see is how fast our data will be updated on the Canary platform as we change the sensor readings on this device. So for all of our measurements, I've enabled them for MQTT Sparkplug B publication by going into the configurations. Okay, now that we've seen the hardware, let's go ahead and put in our MQTT and Sparkplug B details to start publishing these values. So I'll go back to the home page. I'll select MQTT. Click on configuration. Now here you can see that I can select to send MQTT messages as either spark plug payloads or string payloads. So I'll leave it as spark plug payloads. And then here I'll specify my spark plug group ID as my demo plant and edge node ID as my cooling tower. Next, I'll click on add MQTT broker. Now, this is where I need to put in the Hive MQ Cloud broker details that we copied earlier. So, I'll copy and paste the broker URL or hostname here. Use port 3883. And then put SSL here. Give the client a unique and descriptive name. Put in the username and password. And then turn on SSL for secure communication. I'll then click OK. And then finally, I'll specify my Sparkplug device ID. I'll call it Rio IO and select OK. I'll click on Save and then choose to start the MQTT service. Okay, so we have successfully configured our Groove Rio to publish cooling tower information to our Hive MQ Cloud broker. Now, we move on to our Canary Cloud to start receiving and visualizing this information. And the first step is to configure our Canary MQTT collector. To configure the MQTT collector, we'll run the Canary admin application. Our Canary system here has already been licensed and installed properly with the MQTT collector as part of that installation. I can see from my table that I currently have no collectors enabled or configured. So I'll start with the configuration tab and I'll have to establish a new connection group. When I create a new connection group, all of the components of that connection group are automatically filled in for me. I just need to customize it for my needs. So we'll give it a name. Name how I would like my client ID to appear. Build out the servers. In this case, I already have a placeholder. And here I need to copy and paste the unique information to the Hive MQ cloud. I'm going to change it from public to secure. Triple eight three. I'll have my username. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste my password. Because we're using triple eight three, I need to enable my SSL TLS. Apply those changes. So now my server has been configured. 
Now I need to modify my subscription. So we've already by default created a wildcard subscription. I'm going to subscribe and keep it wildcard and subscribe to everything that I have access to through my username. I'm also going to tell it to automatically log all of the tags that it finds and name what the data set should be within Canary. We'll call this the Hive MQ data set. We'll apply. Last, I tell it where the storage is located. By default, it's looking to the local host. If you have the MQTT collector installed local to the historian, you would leave a local host. In my instance, I'll be sending to a different historian. And that will be my historian machine name called Canary Live. Now I could also here put in the IP address. I don't need to do that based on my current configuration. We'll apply those changes. Come down to status and we'll be able to start the session. Now, if I wanted to filter and create filters on the tags or do some additional optional configuration, I'll do that under the filters, tag properties, categories. I don't need to do that. In this case, I enable and you'll see that I've connected and my connection is good. We found 20 tags, we're logging 20 tags and that data is currently coming into the historian. When I look to the historian, I find my data set. And here's all the tags that I've been logging today. And then you can see here under my demo plant cooling tower namespace. There's the level, the pressure and the temperature tags. Now I can also see this data. by logging into Axiom and looking at my cloud instance. I've previously created an application in this application I'm able to see the level, pressure and temperature tags that were logging from our Hive MQ Cloud Broker. And if I add some liquid to increase the level, you can see it jump instantly on the Canary platform. And also, when I put my temperature prop in hot water, you can see it rise instantly. And if I need to add more controls to my application, I can click on edit, resize my chart area, drag a circular gauge, and then search for cooling tower, level, and then I'll add the value, click add and close. And there you can see the current value of our cooling tower level. So we've managed to collect process data from a plant flow device, send the data as MQTT Spark Plug B messages to Hive MQ Cloud and forward it to Canary Cloud Historian for visualization without writing any piece of code. Now, if I start publishing from another Opto22 or any other Sparkplug B enabled device into the same IFMQ Cloud Broker, the Canary historian would automatically discover the data and add it to graphs. I hope you enjoyed this video about real-world MQTT for Industry 4.0.
check out the Hive MQ YouTube channel for more videos like this.